Hey, how's it going? Welcome, Viking fans. If you're confused, you should be. I do not have uh, access to my camera today, but you get to look at Adam and Dorian's lovely faces for the podcast. But I'm finally back. I'm sorry I missed last week. Welcome to the show. How the heck are you, fellas? Well, last week it was just me and Dorian doing our thing. So it's nice to have a third here with us to join in and have a little bit more opinions and have a little bit more fun. So nice to have you back. We should have renamed it Two and a Half Men since my camera's not working. <coughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. No, it's all right. Uh, it's a good week, too. The Vikings won on Sunday. We're going to cover the Dolphins game and preview the uh, away game at Detroit. But let's talk about this uh, podcast this week. It's number 332, if you can believe it. It's called Tannehill Street Blues. Yeah. I like it. A little bit of a throwback. I don't. Has there been a Hill Street Blues reboot? Not that I know of. I mean, there probably has been, but I just missed it. Who knows? But yeah, otherwise, it's a little bit of an old school reference for uh, the older people listening. We can appreciate it. Like I always say, Adam is your local source here for uh, all the, the titles. So if it's a good one, it's his. If it sucks, you can probably bet that it was mine or Mr. West. So <laughs> well, let's jump right into these uh, quick hits. Uh, this is a good one to start off with. If you guys didn't, if you missed the game Sunday, the Vikings put up a 40 burger on the Dolphins. Uh, Dalvin Cook is this week's NFC Offensive Player of the Week because, surprise, surprise, Kevin Stefanski decided to run the ball. <laughs> well, it is easy to run the ball when you're getting a nice chunk each time, and uh, especially when you got a lead. So uh, I'll, I'll reserve a little bit of my uh, praise for the run game until I see it a little more consistently, or a little more consistently. But for now, you kind of have to be pretty happy with what you saw. Yeah, I, I, I second that, Adam. Um, as great as great as it was to see, yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to go full in on our running game and just feel like you know it's there now and it's complete and we're just about to just wreck shop. So I'm I'm waiting, but I'm very happy and I was very impressed with uh, what we did this past Sunday on the run. Yeah, when you don't have it for so long and you know that it's there, but you don't get to use it, and it finally shows its beautiful face, it's, it's a good thing. So congrats to Dalvin Cook. Uh, with the stats right here in front of me, we can kill two birds with one stone. Uh, 19 carries, the longest one of 26, 136 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. This serves my memory correct. This is uh, his first game ever with a pair of rushing touchdowns. So uh, very, very happy for Dalvin Cook. That and the Vikings ran the ball 40 times this game. I think we mentioned this about a month ago when we were all frustrated with the, uh, the Seattle and the New England losses. There's a stat out there, and I know I said it at least once, when Kirk throws the ball less than this many times and we rush at least this many times or more, we always win, and that was, that was the case Sunday. But we'll break down the stats in a little bit. Absolutely. Um, speaking of Dalvin Cook, he is the Week 15 uh, Unstoppable Performer beating out Derrick Henry and Kalen Ballage. Uh, Derrick Henry's on a hot streak, by the way. If you picked him up in fantasy, you are loving life like myself. It's true. Cat catapulted <laughs> me into the championship round, so thank you for that. But uh, he beat out two good names and two hot hands as of late. So Dalvin Cook train is uh, fully locked and loaded and left the station. So Hey, you're in your fantasy football Super Bowl as well? I am. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. With a not-so-good roster, too, and I'm really happy about it. <laughs> Hey, all it takes is getting hot at the right time. It's all it takes. It really does. Pile together those those wins at the crucial time, and you'll you'll find yourself where me and Adam are. Uh, this is an interesting nugget because tying everything together of uh, being a North Carolinian, I went to that dreadful Saints and Panthers game on Monday night. Um, Cam Newton is a shell of himself now because he's an injury. Uh, if you guys missed it today, he is out for the rest of the season because the Panthers have shut him down and their playoff hopes are done. But to tie this back together for Viking news. Taylor Heineke, former Viking quarterback, now with the Panthers, is going to start for the last two weeks for Ooh. the Panthers. So very, very excited for him to showcase what he can do. A lot of Vikings fans really liked him when he was here. Showed a lot of potential. Yes. I liked him too. And uh, to tie it all together where I'm sitting right now, I am in Newport News, Virginia, visiting my son for the holidays, and ODU is right down the road. So Taylor Heineke, you have come full circle once again on the Purple People podcast. Something like you said ODU, like – like, you know, Garfield's dog friend, Odie, at the <laughs> university for that dog. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I would like to thank uh, David Bod showed up in the chat. We've got Michael Cambria, Firestarter. Uh, just talking in here, uh, David Body was impressed with the special teams performance, which we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, yeah, it was nice to see a nice return there. I hate those cliche things that you hear Kirk and everybody. <laughs> it really was a well-balanced, all-around team, played well kind of game. I had a hard time picking a, uh, a donkey because – everything seemed to work for us on Sunday, even though there was a lull between the second and the third quarters. But yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk about the special teams in a little bit. This was a fun one. This came out yesterday or today, I believe. Four Vikings were named to the Pro Bowl. Uh, the only one on offense was Adam Thielen. And on the defensive side, we have Anthony Barr, who is coming up hot as of late. Um, fan favorite Harrison Smith and Daniil Hunter finally got the recognition he deserves. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, Everson Griffin not getting the the nod makes sense because of the time he missed. Uh, otherwise, I believe that he would still be in there. Uh, yeah. I do, Anthony Barr, I think, is there mostly for name recognition based on the Aaron Rodgers hit. <laughs> Probably. He did not start the year out so good, but as of the, the last couple of games, he's he's starting to come into his own again and playing like he should, so... Not mad about that pick, and offensively, I think that was the right choice. Adam Thielen's really the only game breaker national star. I would say Diggs, but he's not going to beat out a Julio Jones or that kind of player for the NFC side. And obviously, yeah, he's not, not nearly as popular as Odell either. Yeah, no, he's not going to get it, but he's close, and he's going to break that thousand yard mark finally in his career Sunday against the uh, the Lions. So he, he might get there next year, but I'm glad to see Adam Thielen got a got a nod. That was great. I had predicted that Diggs would make his first Pro Bowl appearance. It's his first Pro Bowl appearance, right? Uh, Diggs? Yeah, it would be, right? It would, it would be, yeah. Yeah, I predicted that he would get his first appearance uh, riding in off that Minneapolis Miracle game and having a pretty solid season so far, but not quite in the works. Maybe he'll be an alternate. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe none of these Vikings will be playing. It's The Pro Bowl is a weird thing. That's very true. Dorian, did you have any snubs from any other teams or anybody on the Vikings that you thought should be in there? Um, I, I kind of have a question mark on Anthony Barr. And <laughs> I, I, no, just because of his, you know, I don't know. He's He's been doing good as of late, but I don't know if his overall, you know, grants him that, that, that spot. And like Adam said, it might, it might be just because of name recognition, and, you know. If not for the amazing number of defensive tackles that the NFC has, Linval Joseph would be in there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he's played well enough to deserve it, but he just didn't get voted in. Well, speaking on Anthony Barr, it's just something that I think is going to change over time. I don't think fans should have the say-so in it because there's a lot of bias there and name recognition. Aaron Rodgers is in it yet again, and he's not having – the best season, and then a guy like Andrew Luck is having a statistically great season and helping his team on his back. He's not in there, so who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll see a change in the future, but I'm not going to complain ever about a Viking getting in, so congrats to those four for uh, making it to the Pro Bowl. Absolutely. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings are looking at adding linebacker depth. Uh, Alex Singleton of the CFL's Calgary Stampeders, that's also where Johnny Menzel played, uh, is the CFL's leading tackler. I believe they looked at uh, someone from the CFL at quarterback position too recently. So this is interesting. Oh, what's his name? What's his name? That quarterback? Because I want I want us to sign him just because of his name alone. Like I would like <laughs> I to don't him in just to put him on the roster just because of Bo <laughs> something Bo Bo <laughs> Levi. Oh, Man, sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> I know I'm on like random, but man, Bo Levi Mitchell, yeah, Bo Levi Mitchell. That's that dude's name. The wow, the Minnesota Vikings because his name is Bo <laughs> Levi Mitchell. That is quite the name. We we've got some Pro Bowl talk here in the chat. Uh, David Bade says that he would see Sheldon Richardson in there before Barr, and as I said before, that defensive tackle spot. There's just so much talent on the NFC side that I, I don't know. Uh, Sergio Moreno would rather see Eric Kendricks in there over Barr, and I can agree with that. I think talent-wise, I think Kendricks has had a better season. I think Barr's had some excellent games, but he hasn't really been consistent. Uh, I would have rather seen Kendricks in there personally, but 
like I said, you know, we we don't make those decisions. <laughs> yeah, we can't collectively make that. I, was, <laughs> I love our fans too on this show because there's always some good input. There's a lot of comical stuff that we do and a lot of comical stuff the fans say, but you guys that tune into the show, you get it. And, you know, you, you make some very solid points. So thank you for those. Absolutely. Uh, ESPN has reported that ex-Vikings offensive coordinator John DeFilippo is no longer on the head coaching radar for needy teams. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad about DeFilippo. Uh, just my personal thoughts on this because I didn't get to comment on it last week after the Seahawks loss. I believe that this was just a, a hire out of, ooh, Philadelphia beat the crap out of us, and he's a name, and he's tied to Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson and Frank Reich. He'll come in here and turn everything around, and we upgraded a quarterback with Kirk Cousins, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that he was ready. I think that was evident, um, especially when you know Mike Zimmer will tell it like it is, no matter who it is on the team. Um, yeah, I, I think that he'll get a shot later. Maybe he'll go back to Philadelphia and help out Carson Wentz and be the quarterback's coach again. Maybe he'll go take another offensive coordinator spot and pay a little bit more attention than he did with Minnesota. Like I said, not to take a shot, but I wish him the best in the future. But we, we kind of all saw this coming, right? This, this is not how Minnesota and their $84 million quarterback and their star wide receivers and great defense <coughs> is not how we expected that side of the ball to go. Well, if uh, you will watch the show last week, you know how I felt about it. I just felt like uh, taking this young offensive coordinator, first time throwing him in there with Mike Zimmer, who is almost completely defensive head coach, and giving him so much responsibility right away was not uh, a great situation for him. Uh, it did give him an opportunity to take on so much right away and and see if he could flourish, but it was it just seemed to be a little too much for him right now. Uh, if he goes to a team with a more offensive-minded head coach uh, where he can take a little bit of time to settle in and not have immediate expectations, I think things could be all right for him. But this just wasn't the right situation at the right time for him in order to succeed in Minnesota. And I'm not sure if Kevin Stefanski is the answer either, but it is kind of sad to see his name getting removed from head coaching considerations because of you know one incident because uh yeah things didn't work out here but that doesn't mean he would be a bad performer in another place exactly uh i, I thought that he still would have been you know in consideration for um head coaching job so it's kind of a, of a shock a little shock and surprise to hear that he's been removed so I don't know. No. I just had the same sentiments. Uh, wish him the best. It just didn't work out here. And yeah, we're moved on. Yeah, there are so many Vikings fans that saw him as a long, as a short term offensive coordinator anyway, that he was going to get that opportunity to be a head coach. And then it might only be a season or two. So uh, maybe the Vikings cutting ties right now it just is just kind of speeding that process along as well. But we, you know, we never still wish the worst for anybody in any situation we want to see him go on and su succeed and thank him for everything he did in minnesota but it just wasn't a right fit and hopefully they can they can he hopefully he can find something in the future that is just much better for him indeed yeah i'm sure he will we, we keep it classy here on the show too so expect nothing but these good answers here this next quick hit is pretty cool. Uh, the 2019 salary cap is projected to be approximately 190 million, which is an increase of what it is now from 10 to 14 million dollars of where it currently sits. I think this is a genius move by the NFL. I'm glad it keeps happening, and I'm glad it keeps happening in these small increments. If they bust the doors wide open, uh, I'm not thinking that we have a Golden State Warrior situation in the NFL or New York Yankees or something like that, where a ton of players are going to go to one good team. Um, there are going to be a lot of mercenaries like and Dominic and Sue and, you know, Marcus Peters coming over to places like the Rams for a one year to try to see if they can just put it together and win it all. But this gradual increase, if you're a Viking fan, this makes you feel better about locking up somebody long term that you might like or bringing back up somebody that you didn't think you would have for more than one season like Sheldon Richardson. So I like this a lot. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, moving right along, uh, Vikings honor Everson Griffin as the 2018 Ed Block Courage Award recipient, annually honoring one player from every NFL team who exemplifies commitment to the principles of sportsmanship and courage. This one was a, a really heartwarming bullet after everything that Everson has went through this season. And uh, 
I'm glad to see him kind of coming back to form. He's a little bit uh, slow to warm up after that long break that he had from the team, but this was really fun. This was a great bullet to read. Yeah, considering the road that he took to get back to the Vikings, uh, the struggles that he had off the field, how much of a leader he is on the field. When he was gone, you could definitely tell that there was a difference in, in the leadership shifting. And a lot of these younger defensive ends had to fill in. They did an admirable job, but they just aren't Anderson Griffin. They don't bring that kind of just insane energy to the football field. And to see that award go to him after some of the other players that have overcome adversity to to get that award, it's it's great to see. And it also it says a lot for recognizing mental problems as being something that can be overcome and something that is actually quite serious. So uh, if you are struggling out there mentally, know that you can get help, you can get better, and you can succeed despite those issues. No doubt, no doubt. Um, I have I don't have anything else to add to that other than I'm very happy and just proud of Everson Griffin and obviously come, you know, saying a long way um, and – Hey, real nice, real nice. Yeah, I love those feel-good bullets. Those were always fun. Uh, this one's sort of a feel-good, too. I'm glad to see somebody else that used to be on the team signing with another team and getting another chance. If you guys remember last year, we had uh, kicker Kai Forbath. He signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars recently, so he's going to get another shot to go kick some field goals and extra points for people, so that's cool. Good for him. Yeah, players getting signed places, getting shots. Uh, there was another recent quarterback transactions that you guys are having fun with. Not Vikings related, but you know. Oh, the greatest quarterback alive today, Nathan Peterman. That is such a John Gruden thing to do this season. He <laughs> is. Is John Gruden the Cleveland Browns now? I have no idea what he's doing. He must love draft picks and think that he can just knock the draft out of the park to get rid of his best players sign these trash cans and, and just go forward with it. Trash hey, a, a quick question about him. I'm not, I don't want to spend too much time on him, but I just want to get your guys' opinion on Gruden real quick. Do you think that he's, like, potentially, like, ruining whatever, like, legacy that he left before? Like, oh, absolutely. I think it's long gone at this point. <laughs> I think nothing short of a Super Bowl win, and not even an appearance, nothing short of a Super Bowl win would, would turn this around and he could look at everybody and give them the last laugh. Um, I don't know how far into that 10-year contract he's going to get before he gets uh, shit canned, but like Adam said, I have no clue what he's doing over there, but it's it doesn't make any sense right now. And everything that he's done thus far leaves me scratching my head and saying, that's really dumb. That organization is going to knock every draft out of the park. As I've said before, for the Khalil Mack trade alone, you know, Mark Cooper, whatever, if he doesn't fit your system or he doesn't want to be there, fine. Uh, and how ironic that Marshawn Lynch is out for the year when this dumpster fire happens. I'm glad he's not around for that. Kind of sad for the commentary that you would probably not hear because he doesn't talk to the media. But with the Khalil Mack stuff, you, you get a, a – a draft pick and it's like a lottery ticket and you get a winning lottery ticket. And what do you do? You go cash all that in to get more lottery tickets. Just keep the money and the fortune that you had. I don't understand that, but glad we don't have that problem here. So good luck, uh, Oakland Raider fans and John Gruden. I don't know what the hell you're doing, but <laughs> okay. All of a sudden Jeff Fisher doesn't sound like a bad idea. huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was for Kyle West. <laughs> that's awesome uh, this was a, a sad note on Sunday but we can still get into the playoffs the Chicago Bears have officially clinched the NFC North for the first time since 2010 Minnesota will need a wild card spot to make the playoffs they can do it this weekend with a Washington and a Philadelphia loss if I am not mistaken but um just went out the last two games. We're going to be fine. We won the head-to-head -head with Philly, who is the first team in the hunt outside of the set wildcard teams right now. Uh, we have a good shot with um, Detroit because they're not that great this year. And then, of course, being at home against the Bears will be a completely different story than the uh, away game that happened about a month ago because Chicago has not been good on the road this year. But, uh, yeah, we can make the playoffs this Sunday. We just have to have some other stuff go our way on top of being Detroit. The real threat here is going to be Philadelphia. 
Uh, yeah. If Philadelphia can put things together and it looks like they're doing all right right now, if they can win out and the Vikings only win one of their next two, then it's no playoffs. And if the Vikings are to miss the playoffs, I think that would be a, a real disappointment of a season. I, I think that even a playoff berth this season, considering the new <laughs> the offensive coordinator situation, the offensive line situation, uh, bringing in the new coaches, no. Everything that happened with this team, I think that a playoff appearance would kind of solidify that as being okay to translate into the next year. Definitely. That, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I'm looking at the Eagles schedule real fast while we're uh, talking about this. So the Vikings, like I had mentioned. Well, they won the game that I thought they were going to lose last week against the Rams, so. Well, they've got a they've got a tough task ahead. Um, even though the Redskins are down to like a fifth string quarterback, they are on the road the very last week in seventeen, and they are hosting the red hot Houston Texans, who are currently the number two seed in the AFC. So I don't project them to win. Um, I, I don't I don't see that happening. But you know, we said it last year, and they did it with the same scenario as now. With Nick Foles coming in, so hopefully they don't. Um, not a big fan of that fan base, so. Hopefully the Vikings can <laughs> fix it and do what they need to do in these next two weeks. A lot of Vikings fans are really excited about the possibility of Minnesota stealing that fifth seed, and that's a little bit less likely even, considering that they lost the head-to-head with Seattle. Uh, there wouldn't really even be a tiebreaker because of the tie that Minnesota had, unless Seattle has a tie. Even then, like I said, the Minnesota would lose that tiebreaker. So uh, it's going to be a tough situation with that fifth seed. Uh, the sixth seed is most likely where the Vikings are going to land if the other two teams falter or Minnesota wins out. So uh, right now it looks like the Vikings could be playoff bound. Uh, what was the percentage? I think it was 51%, right? I don't know. Uh, that they get a playoff spot? I don't see it in the notes. However, I do know with the sixth seed, if everything pans out like it should, we would be going on the road in the wild card on the first weekend of the playoffs in Chicago, which did not go good for us the first time around. I would much rather go play Dallas, who, you know, they play well against great teams. I think they played to their opponents, and then they got shut out by the Colts. So they're a lot easier to beat. But, I mean, it is what it is. The Vikings got to get in. If you're going to try to make a day, you're going to have to be a good team. So either way, they're going to be playing playoff teams. But that's how it sits right now. We're going to be going to Chicago if we can manage to squeak in at the sixth seed. Fire Breather wants you to know, Kyle, is that Nathan Peterman is the next Tom Brady. He'll win the next 10 Super Bowls and win three Hall of Fames. He's that damn good. Three Hall of Fames. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fire Breather, if you would like to make an official bet on this, I will wager literally every asset that I have. <laughs> This will be the easiest money that I've ever made. You don't so. think he'll make three Hall of Fames? No. I don't, I don't think that's – I think that's out of – the realm of possibility, but just let me know. We'll talk offline and uh, we'll get that contract signed. I could see him making the college hall of fame. (laughs) I know. I I could see that. I'm sorry. This is just real genius. You you, you, you (laughs) trade Khalil Mack, you trade Amari Cooper, but you sign Nathan Peterman. (laughs) Oh yeah. But he also says that uh, Raiders are going to the Super Bowl. Nathan Peterman will go, 300 for 300 for 7,000 yards, 80 touchdowns, no ints. I like the enthusiasm. I don't know what Madden uh, you're playing, but <laughs> we're, we're over here in real life. I'm going to call that. It's not going to happen. Uh, David Bade said the Vikings need that fifth seed and that they'd be much better at Dallas. And honestly, Dallas, the way that they've been playing lately too, with the exception of last week, pretty darn good. Yeah, they're, they're playing to their strength. I think the Amari Cooper trade was genius for them, even though it was a first round given up. He fits so well, and you can see that was kind of the turning point for him going over there. So, but, um, I Isn't it weird I, that Dak can do that with Cooper and he couldn't do it with Dez? You know what? I think it's just Dez being on the decline. I have nothing against Dez Bryant. I hope he recovers from that Achilles injury. But I think it's just a, a good young receiver. I think it was a smart move because they had a bunch of nobodies. <laughs> Yeah. It's just interesting to see how the different personnels can bring out different results because on the surface, Cooper looked like he was really just struggling so bad. And Des <clears throat> sounded like he wanted to help out so much. Right. And the whole thing just seemed like a real mess because they picked Des to stay over signing some offensive linemen 
And I don't know. It's those tough t challenges that you have to make when you're uh, on top of an organization, and it doesn't always work out well. Yeah, that too, and the, the off the field stuff that Des really got into, and I think buried a hole for himself this off season, being a Twitter uh, a Twitter hound and talking all this stuff. You know, it's never a good look, and you know, NFL teams take that very very seriously. If you're going to put it, put all your name out there, the, the only way they're going to get over that is if you're a, a generational talent. They they don't care at that point. But Des is a little past his prime. He likes to talk a lot, and you know, it sucks for him. But like I said, I hope he recovers from that Achilles injury and does well. But uh, let's transition this. Let's talk about the Cowboys. Let's talk about – we were just talking about the Eagles. We'll talk about them and spin this all around because we have our opponents set for next year. We don't have dates. Those will come out later. But we are going to be playing the AFC West and the NFC East. So the away opponents for this coming up season in 2019. Obviously, we have the Bears, the Packers, and the Lions every year. We will be playing in New York against the Giants, in Dallas against the Cowboys, in L.A. versus the Chargers, in Kansas City, and in Seattle. I am sick and tired of going to Seattle. <laughs> <I'm really laughs> it does seem like it happens way too much, doesn't it? They've played, against, they've played in Minnesota once, I think the last four times we played Seattle. And the only other reason they came to Minnesota for, was the playoffs in that one year, which that's not on the schedule. That'll be determined by the play throughout the year. So I'm tired of that. Uh, the home opponents will obviously be the Bears, the Packers, and the Lions. We will host the Eagles. It'll be fun to play them in our house. Uh, the Redskins, <laughs> the Raiders, the Broncos, <laughs> the second-place finisher in the NFC South, which is the Panthers, the Bucks, or the Falcons. That'll probably end up being the Panthers or the Falcons. Uh, the Bucks and the Falcons are tied right now. The Panthers have one game up on them at 6-8. and eight, But we'll see how they pan out. Maybe Taylor Heineken can give them a spike, but – that's uh, that's cool. That's a that's a nice little schedule. I see some tough games against yeah. the Chargers and the Chiefs, and maybe even Seattle again. And I see the Raiders on the schedule, and that lights my world up. I'm really excited about that. Yeah, and I don't I don't expect Denver to be bad for a long time. Uh, Washington was good when their players were healthy. Philly's always a challenge. Honestly, this schedule I think, or at least the opponents, look tougher than last. Look, they look tougher than this year's. Yeah. I'm going to say that it's equal to this year. Uh, just going to depend on the Vikings play. There are question marks all over these. Is, is Eli Manning going to be gone in New York, even though New York's pretty bad? How's Dallas going to fare? They're always good at home. Uh, is Phillip Rivers going to call it quits? He's kind of up there in age. The Kansas City game in Kansas City is going to be really rough because Patrick Mahomes is going to be there for a long time. You're looking at the Eagles. Is Wentz going to be healthy? Is it going to be Foles? Who the hell is going to play quarterback for the Redskins? The Raiders are the Raiders. Is Case Keenum still going to be in Denver? I think probably. And I'm not really too scared of the Panthers or the Falcons as much as I would be worried about the Saints again. So it's a good, it'll be an interesting schedule. I do see your I do see some uh, some rough games there, but this team can handle it. We're ignoring one thing: Adrian Peterson potentially coming back. Home. Yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be in Minnesota for the weekends. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Maybe I mean, did, did he sign more than a one year deal in Washington? I don't think so. Oh, that I, I, minimum I, one year. But I mean, oh, I'm sorry, Kyle, go ahead. Oh, I just said a veteran minimum one year deal. If I'm correct on that, I believe I am. Yeah. So who knows where he'll be next year? Isn't he close on a thousand yards? I'm not trying to take up too much. No, no, no. Let me let me look it up. You guys fill in for a second. Let me look at his stats. Yeah, but don't they also have like Darius Geis returning from injury and some other like top dra draft picks and some I decent believe, players there? All right, I, I, I believe so. I just thought, just given like you know his play, I thought that you know maybe he he did enough. Honestly, oh, this is a good. <laughs> but also, <laughs> Washington yeah. might be looking for a new long term quarterback. So. Yeah, Alex Smith's definitely not going to be ready to go by the, the the start of the season. He just got released from the hospital over the weekend, and I don't know. He tore his leg up part like a month ago. Um, there's a lot of infection going on. He wanted his privacy. The team wanted his privacy. There, he's not going to be playing quarterback for them next year at any point of the early part of the season. Speaking of Adrian Peterson, I got his stats up, guys. He's gonna, he's having an okay year again. He is going to beat a thousand yards. He's at nine hundred and twenty three. So he's got to get what 30, 67 yards, 30, I'm sorry, yeah, 60, 77 yards, 77 yards, 
and he's got seven touchdowns on the year. So he could very well end the year with double digit touchdowns and a thousand yards again at 33 years old. That's awesome. He'll get Good it for him. Not bad at all. No. Well, let's do a quick survival league update. Cool. Uh, we had one elimination this week. Anybody's guess chose the Rams to win, and they were wrong, and they go out. I got my second strike this week because I went with the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> hey, you got to have some fun, right? Why not? Oh, of course, of course. I forgot who they played. They played Washington. Oh, God. Yeah. So we have one team that has one strike. That's this is my year. Four other teams have two strikes. That's me, Home Sweet Mahomes, YY, and the Zim Reapers. So only five teams remain. And if the bottom four all get strikes this week, this could be the week that this is my year wins. Otherwise, who knows? We can keep going. I'm glad that not that you finally, you know, got your strike. But I'm glad that I'm glad that things have been interesting and mixed up. That's a, that's a nice little shakeup. Well, you know, when you pick Denver and Jacksonville, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> the NFL is funny this year. You could have picked Denver and the, the Chargers and the Jacksonville when they beat the Patriots earlier in the season. Now they look terrible, and they have Cody Kessler starting. It's an interesting thing picking football games, man. It really is. All right, we're going to break down this game, and we're going to give out our game balls and donkeys. Uh, like we said earlier, the Vikings hosted the Dolphins. Uh, they were 7-6. and six. They are now 7-7, seven and seven, that being the Dolphins. The Vikings improved to 7-6-1. and one. They won 41-17, to 17. and if you didn't watch the game and looked at this stat line, you would think that it was lopsided. This game was very much uh, a football game and very close, well into the third quarter. Started off sure. hot. Uh, 21 to nothing Minnesota in the first ha- uh, quarter, 21 to 10 by half, 23 to or I'm sorry, 24 to 17 in the third quarter, and then the Vikings scored 17 unanswered in the fourth quarter. So it was a crazy game, uh, but it was a fun game once we finally got our our stuff together. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give mine out real quick. I'm giving mine total cliche answer here. Kevin Stefanski, thank you for running the ball like Mike Zimmer asked making Dalvin Cook look good, uh, not asking Kirk Cousins to do anything crazy, and just sticking to the plan and actually making it work. That first, those first three series where we scored touchdowns back to back to back was absolutely amazing. Every Viking fan needed that. I think the team needed it too. Yeah, Dalvin Cook, it's uh, it's a weird situation with him. Uh, Earlier this season when he was struggling to stay on the field, a lot of lot of fans were wondering if he really was going to be the player that you thought he was going to be. Uh, he came in <laughs> and proved that when he's healthy, he can be a difference maker. And really running the offense through him helped so much. It opened up the passing game. It opened up the play action. It opened up the run for other running backs, and it worked out so well. Yeah, it, it was quite refreshing. It was quite refreshing to see us move the ball on the ground. It really was. I really don't really don't have anything else to add to it. I mean, it was just beautiful. <laughs> so let's talk about game balls and donkeys, huh? Yep, absolutely. We have two game balls in the chat already. Michael Cambria and David Bade both gave their game ball to Tyler Conklin. Solid, solid choice. Nice. Uh, who do you guys got? Oh, that that was mine. I, I picked Kevin Stefanski. I picked the typical answer. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, mine's is typical, too, because I'm going with Dalvin Cook. Excellent Dalvin, choice. Dalvin Cook in this game, he really – well, to me, he, he, he showed that he can actually be that potential future, you know, three-down back. Like I, he kind of proved me wrong and I'm happy to say that I'm wrong, you know, cause I was one of those people that Adam, that you had mentioned far as like, I've had questions about, you know, what kind of back that, you know, that he would be for this team. And he really showed that, you know, given that opportunity and that chance to really just get that green light, he can be that, he could be, he could be that guy. Here's a fun pro football focus stat about Dalvin Cook. Uh, Cook averaged 3.8 yards after contact 
as a rusher and forced a whopping eight missed tackles on the ground in addition to one missed tackle he forced as a receiver. Cook's nine forced missed tackles are tied with Derrick Henry for the most of any player in week 15. He finished the game with an overall grade of 84.2. I remember a time this season when everybody said we should cut him. <laughs> uh, Fans want everybody cut if they have a bad week. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that one right there. I'm super happy. I'm not a football scout. I'm merely a fan. But this is who I envision personally when we watched the film tape and we saw him for four games last year. This is – this was his kind of game. This is exactly the way he should be used, and he thrived, and I'm super happy. Well, my game ball is going to someone else that a lot of Vikings fans have called for being cut, but not lately because he's been playing really well. Uh, this is from Pro Football Focus right here. Uh, Minnesota's highest-graded defender against Miami was Mackenzie Alexander, who finished with a grade of 90.5, the highest of his career, by a distance, he was targeted four times in coverage, knocked two of those passes away, and the other two were caught for a combined total of two yards. <laughs> wow. He's quietly figuring it out. Yes. He only had three tackles on the day, but all of them were solo. The third tackle that he had was a sack on quarterback Ryan Tannehill uh, when they blitzed him, and they really – figuring out what to do with him, what his strengths are, and he is proving to be a big asset. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy that he's around because we've had cornerback struggles this year. Trey Wayne's had a concussion problem mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. But, Mike you know, Hughes Xavier, is out. Mike Hughes tore his ACL, and then you're thinking about Xavier Rhodes. We all thought he popped his head <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It's nice to have that depth. and you know, It's further proving that Mike Zimmer knows what he's doing with these players. It's weird. A defensive backs coach is good with corners. Weird how that works. It's strange. Uh, my donkey of the game, I'm giving it to Kirk Cousins. Uh, for me, I am really tired of the narrative of Kirk Cousins is going to throw a turnover and potentially a pick six every single game. I, I'm i going to defend and kind of be a hypocrite of what I just said because I picked Kirk Cousins. It was a very, very, very well jump cut from the defender. Read the play very good. I think it was going to be a screen of some sort, I believe. But point, point being, this is not what we brought in Kirk Cousins for. This is supposed to be a game where, hey, you don't have to do much. All right, man, just do the little things. But these constant turnovers, and I believe he leads the NFL as far as quarterbacks go with that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of seeing it, and I'm sure a lot of Viking fans are frustrated with it. He didn't have a terrible game having two touchdowns. He had a rating of 112, QBR 56.3, but these turnovers are starting to add up. And this is not how you win in the postseason. One of the things I thought was really interesting about pro football focus is that they did not hold that interception of Kirk Cousins against him. It was actually – downgraded to uh, Kyle Rudolph for not blocking the defender that made the play on the ball. Uh, I don't know. I, I disagree. <laughs> not, that's not what I saw on my television. Or, no, excuse me, my, um, my, my phone while I was at work watching the game. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, to me, it just looked like he threw the ball without even really, uh, you know, taking, a, taking in what the coverage offered. But, yeah, he, he had pressure in his face uh to me you don't just throw a ball to a spot in that situation you throw it away if you, if there's nothing there rather than gamble throw it away right weren't we up okay when he threw that pick that pick six weren't we up <coughs> 21 nothing yes oh okay so pretty much he's not my donkey Kyle, but just to add on to it that picks that that pick six that started um, the momentum, you know, shift for, for my, Miami. You know, what I'm saying for that moment where they got into a little rhythm and they end up scoring, and I couldn't help but just think like, oh my gosh, like typical Minnesota Vikings football. We're gonna, you know, potentially squander this this lead and potentially this game. I felt like when we came out, okay, so it shot off twenty one nothing. I felt like. Uh, we were uh, we were in a fight, and we knocked it. We knocked them on the ass. And then when Kirk Cousins threw that that pick, I felt like that was us. Like, 
oh, do you need help? Oh, you know, and getting ice for some to, to nurse the person that you just knocked on their ass back to, you know, saying back to help. You know? Oh, definitely. The momentum shifted in a big way after that play. And then when yeah. the second half opened up and they had that big run by Balage, it felt oh. like a lot was just getting sucked right out of the team. If this hadn't been a home game and they didn't have the crowd to feed off, I'm not sure that the Minnesota Vikings would have been able to recover from that swing. Yeah, and that's that's my point exactly. I love Kirk. Uh, we stand behind him here at the show, uh, for better or for worse. We're stuck with him anyway, so you might as well support him. But it, what to what Adam's saying? We're going to play games on the road because we didn't win the division. We're not a number one or two seed. We don't get a buy. And if you do this on the road in clutch situations, and that's the thing, Kirk has never been labeled as clutch. He has a very bad record against good teams and in prime time. Blah 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 blah. You can't do stuff like this, and it's a common theme this year. I can think of multiple games where he's thrown pretty stupid interceptions and some of them for returns for points. So when you're supposed to be blowing a team out and burying them, uh, I'm, don't don't give them a chance. You know, just keep throwing dirt on them. Don't dig them out of the hole, bury them further down. But, you know, I still support I still support Kirk, even though I'm giving my donkey this week. Hey, can I tell you guys a secret? Let's hear it. Uh, Case Keenum would have done that because that's what <laughs> I've heard. And, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh. I love that Chris Carter said that if we had the Case Keenum this year in the schedule, that we would have only won two games with him. <laughs> and you know, Chris Carter got criticized by um, our Viking, Viking, some of our Viking faithful for that comment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I'm with Chris Carter on that. I love Case Keenum to death, but that was a flash in the pan last year. Yeah, the, but the Vikings and a lot of fans knew that wasn't sustainable. No way. Yeah, we had a lot of things swing our way last year. I think the miracle in uh, Minnesota was a big representation of the season. A lot of things went our way last year. Not complaining about it, but I digress. Yeah. My donkey of the week, and I've been praising him a little bit here and there, giving him little nuggets of treats. This this week, no treats for Laquan Treadwell. <laughs> oh, that's he, mine as well. He couldn't get any separation from the from the defense. Uh, when the ball was thrown his way, he didn't haul it in. It was only once, but it didn't happen. And uh, I don't know if you saw the most embarrassing block attempt ever that uh, Sage Rosenfeld shared on Twitter of La- Laquan Red while trying to block somebody. But normally he's really good at it. But, man, that was just frustratingly disappointing. And and I, I, I know he can be better than this. So hopefully he can be in the future. But this was... Definitely not his best game by far. Guys, I'm just going to pull something up real quick. I'm really glad that you picked him uh, so I can pull this up for the year. Uh, 2018 regular season, looking at Laquan Treadwell's stats, uh, he has been targeted 51 times. He has hauled in 34 of those. Um, Touchdowns, 2018 regular season, one touchdown. Was that at Green Bay? Yeah, Green Bay, I think. Um. Let's just go over here to this guy that we signed earlier in the year. Uh, Aldrick Robinson is 17 for 29 <laughs> with five touchdowns. Guys, Adam, I know you're going to hate me for this. Can we can we cut our losses there? You know, that, that finger on the hand has gangrene. Let's just chop it off. And, you're comparing uh, a slot receiver to an outside receiver. Come on, man. No, no. BS. I, I'm just saying no. I see a lot of that slot receiver that we lost in Jarius Wright picked right the hell back up in Aldrick Robinson. I, I get it. I understand they're different. I know their body types are different. I, I, I just don't. I He's never going to get the ball anyways. So as long as Diggs and Thielen are here, we can find somebody else. I have faith. Kyle, you, you, uh, Kyle, you mentioned it. It's just all production, bro. And pretty much, I'm piggybacking. That's my that was my donkey too. Just for the fact, I feel like, and as much as I shit on Laquan Treadwell, and it might be for shits and giggles, but no, he hasn't panned out. I I don't want I don't he he does need to be on this team next year. He does need to be on this team next year. We need to elevate. I, I thought we should have elevated Aldrick Robinson after the um our game against the Rams because he came out like a, like a bat out of hell and you know produced. And he's been producing. Kyle, you just put it out there. So I, I don't think it'll hurt our team, uh, hurt us just to swap them out. I think Al Robinson needs to get some of uh, Laquan Treadwell's uh, touches or time, whatever you want to call it. And the Vikings do have some young receivers that are waiting to come up. 
A lot of fans really love Chad Beebe. They do. They really like him a lot. That would be me. Yep, I like him too. I, I like, like Brandon Zilstra as well. On Treadwell. Sorry, whatever. Yeah, Zilstra, Beebe, Robinson, and then you got Thielen Diggs. I wouldn't see that as being a bad receiving core, but then again, I'm, I, I like the blocking that Treadwell usually brings to the team. I just don't understand why he struggles so badly to get separation. You know, I get it. I, I know that he's not the fastest guy. I know his, his body type is more of what got him a look than anything else. And, you know, co- overcome the injury in college and coming back. But, yeah, you got to get that separation. You got to figure that out. Um, I'm sure New England will pick him up for a fifth-round pick, and he'll get 1,000 yards. So I'm sure that'll <coughs> come to fruition. Uh, Scott Schwab gives his donkey to the refs for now calling a foul on a on a on a pat block attempt. Yeah, on another point for touchdown. Yeah, he, they uh, they got called the leverage this time when you know it was not a, a game changing one. But yeah, what can you do? Firebreather says that Case Keenum is just a good story, and everything went right for us last year. And that's true. It's very true. Uh, Fire Breather giving some love to Aldrick Robinson, saying he's sneaky good and that that touchdown was beautiful. Uh, Yang Yaj added that Conklin has more snaps than Treadwell, which during that game, I think they both had 22, according to Yaj here, so definitely makes sense. Uh, Scott Schwab gave his game ball to Kevin Stefanski. And, uh, yeah, that's, that gets us all caught up in the chat. Love it. Love it when you guys give out game balls and donkeys too. It's a lot of fun, right? It's a lot of fun to hear everybody's different takes. Love interaction with everybody here in the chat. Um, to run down the game, uh, Kirk Cousins only threw the ball 21 times, which is kind of what we need to do. We rushed the ball 40 times between Dalvin Cook, 19, Latavius Murray, 15. Uh, Stefan Diggs, once Kirk Cousins rushed five times for seven yards. Dalvin Cook had two rushing touchdowns. Latavius Murray had one. Uh, it's really weird because I'm used to seeing those guys go up the middle, um, and they both scored on the the edge, I believe. So that's yeah, pretty- a lot of success on that off tackle uh, by Riley Rafe, where uh, the edge got sealed really well. Tyler Conklin, I believe it was just no, it was David Morgan that sealed the edge on that one, right? I think so. On the um, Murray touchdown, I think it was. I have to go back and look at. It. I think you're right. Um, I was I was driving from. <coughs> Here, Murray so. doesn't have that speed and elusiveness that Cook has, so when he can get those blocks out in front, that's when he is at his best. I'm going to start something at the end of the year, too. Whenever our season ends, hopefully not for a while. Um, players that need to be gone, players that you want to keep. It's going to be a real fun segment to uh, kind of do one week. We might be able, even be able to stretch it out just because the, the offseason is going to take so long. Because you guys are talking about uh, Laquan Treadwell. We would obviously talk about him later, about being gone. People that you want to see gone. Another one, spoiler for me, I'm, I'm pretty sick of the Mike Rimmers experience, uh, experiment too, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and digress from that. I won't he talk. also did not have a very good game. He got so, called up several know, times on I penalties. Know, I want to and... know when he has had a good game for us because I keep seeing him getting knocked on his ass. And the worst part too, being a guard, you know, I could see the, the end or one of the tackles, but I've seen linebackers come through and just run this guy over. I'm like, why did we pay him? And isn't it really weird to see the Vikings finding more success running to the left, or yeah, running to the left than the right? Yeah, that yeah. that's not right. That's not the way it should be. Mm-mm. Whatever, we'll take it. <laughs> um, moving on to receiving, Tyler Conklin led the team in yards, two receptions and three targets for fifty-three yards. Uh, Stephon Diggs four for seven for forty-nine, a touchdown. Aldrick Robinson was two for two for forty-four yards and a touchdown. Dalvin Cook, Kyle Rudolph, Adam Thielen, all caught passes as well. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. 14 receptions, 215 yards. No fumbles in this game, which is really nice on the Minnesota side. Defensively, this is where it gets fun because the Vikings sacked Ryan Tannehill nine times. I was very surprised at Miami oh, yes. in the game. Um, Anthony Barr led the way with seven total tackles, five by himself, two sacks, two tackles for a loss, two quarterback hits. Right behind him was Eric Kendricks, six for three, uh, one sack, one tackle for loss, one pass defended, one quarterback hit. They, I could go down the list all day. Uh, there's a lot of guys that contributed. Daniels Hunter had two sacks. Everson Griffin, Mackenzie Alexander, Sheldon Richardson, Tom Johnson had a sack. Uh, all total, there were 11 quarterback hits, five passes defended, 12 tackles for loss, nine sacks. Oh, my God. That's yeah, this was a bit of a defensive clinic right here. 
Yes. It was. I'm, like I said earlier, I'm I'm pretty. I was pretty surprised they kept him in the game. He was he was definitely feeling that Monday morning and into into yesterday for sure. Uh, special teams: Amir Abdullah did a uh, one kick return for 24 yards. Marcus Sherrill's man, he he still got it. Uh, five punt returns, 116 yards. His longest was 70. I really thought he was going to break out for another special oh, team. Looked like he was going to go. Uh, Dan Bailey was perfect on the day, two for two uh, for field goals, long of 36, five for five on extra points. Matt Wild, three punts, 127 yards, averaging 42.3, his longest was 46. So there are your stats from that game. Very positive game from this team. It was a very fun game to watch after the first quarter, or uh, the first quarter and then the fourth quarter. Not so much in the middle, but we figured it out. Well, the Vikings dominated time of possession, too. They had the ball almost seven minutes more than Miami did during the game. And controlling the, the pace on the ground is a big part of that. Uh, this Vikings team is designed around a strong defense. And then if they can complement that with a strong running game that can pick up first downs, eat up a lot of clock, move the ball down the field, that is the recipe for success the Minnesota Vikings are going to want. They don't want shootout-style games where it's back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. This Vikings game wants to win games Ugly, brutal, black and blue. That's what they want. That's the way it should be. Built around the defense, run the ball, control the clock. That's how you win games. That's how Mike Zimmer will win football games. That's that's. We we're talking about Case Keenum earlier. That's exactly what happened last year. We dominated the time of possession. We limited turnovers. We ran the ball really well, and the defense was great. It's weird. It's the same formula we've had since he got here. <laughs> and last week, I think the Vikings were what two and thirteen on third and fourth downs, and this week they were five for thirteen on third and fourth. So uh, that the, the ability to just convert at least a, a little more can make a massive difference. Totally. But we even saw situations in this game that I thought was kind of weird, where our second down and short. They'd do a sneak with Kirk Cousins. They wouldn't even get to third down. They want that first down that badly. And it's that second and short where usually teams can gamble, take a shot down the field. But this Vikings team wasn't playing that game. That's they true. wanted that first down. They wanted to keep the ball. They wanted to keep that clock moving. And really, <clears throat> this was one of the few times that the Vikings wanted to put their foot on the gas and just keep on driving through. And outgaining the Dolphins, 418 yards to 193 on the day. Oh, that, that is. That's just incredible. Sorry, I got rid of the stats there. It's an amazing one, though. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit, and we can kind of segue this. We were talking about nine sacks in this game. I remember earlier in the year when we hosted the Lions, we had 10 sacks against Matt Stafford. I remember 19, that game. 19 sacks in two different games, and we're going to face Detroit again this Sunday just to preview a little bit. Um, Detroit has had a weird season. You know, they've beaten teams like the Patriots. I believe they beat the Panthers too, uh, when they were on a hot streak. So they, they can win at home. I don't like the Vikings on the road as much towards the end of the year, but, uh, we should come out and I'll look at the point spread here in a minute, uh, on this game for everyone, but we should come out victorious as long as you don't shit the bed and roll around in it. Like uh, Minnesota's five and a half point favorites. Nice. So going down their schedule, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to round out this season against the Packers, too. That's funny. So, yeah, the uh, the Lions have had a weird year. They started out with losses to the Jets and the 49ers. They beat the Patriots, which is super weird. Um, they have wins over the Dolphins. They have wins over the Panthers and, and the Cardinals. And the, they lost to the Bills last week, so they're not very good. Um, <laughs> right now, as far as we look at the NFC North, they are in last place at five and nine. That tie with the Packers puts the Packers at five, eight, and one. The Vikings are in second place at seven, six, and one. So yeah, um, the Lions are are trash again. I, I I hate that for Detroit fans. I really do. Um, but it should be a game that the Vikings should win, uh, especially with the momentum they have and a new new fire under their butts with Kevin Stefanski. So looking forward to it. Uh, I believe it's a one o'clock game on Sunday. Let me check one more time. No, I think it's 10, well, at least for me. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, an early yeah. game. It is it's, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, and it's on Fox, so you can check it out Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern 
That'll be 10 Pacific if you're over there where Dorian's at. Noon for me. Wee. <coughs> Fire breather. I'm glad that Tom Johnson's back. Uh, thinks that Richardson is amazing. Linval's amazing. Everson's back and getting better. Weatherly can easily be a starter, and Hunter is a freak of nature. And there's just so much talent. And we're not even getting to some of the guys that, that the Vikings drafted this year that they never even really got to plug in. And honestly, one of the players I was the most excited about coming to the draft that I researched so much on, I really want to see what Hercules Mata'afa can do when he returns. I forgot about that guy. Thank you for yeah. mentioning him. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but yeah, like Jalen Holmes hasn't been getting a lot of, of reps either and just because of the talent in front of him. And it's the same kind of situation that we saw with a lot of Vikings defenders who are pass rushers or uh, can substitute to the inside. It's just strange to see just so much talent stacked up on that defensive line. You know, it's funny, too, that you mentioned that. I looked at uh, all these early mock drafts. We don't even have the order set of the, the draft yet. We can kind of sort of see, you know, who's going to be in the top ten, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And uh, they had the Vikings taking an interior defensive lineman. <laughs> just like, for why? For what? Because we're going to lose Sheldon Richardson or something? I don't. I don't understand that. I think a lot of Viking fans are going to call for the head of Rick Spielman if we don't address this offensive line. I'm calling it right now. Vikings fans are going to be pissed because it's going to be a linebacker in the first round. Shut up, Adam. It's going to be. They're going to have to let Barr walk, and they're going to take a linebacker. <laughs> okay, but, but, hey, but you just said, Adam, you know, like we have that depth. We have. Not at linebacker. No, not at linebacker. Oh, my good. Okay, okay, no, okay, you're right. You're right, but no, <laughs> this offensive line needs to be priority. Okay, we can always get somebody a later round at linebacker, <laughs> but no, not our first pick. Whether, or, yeah, no, offensive line. But they could always spend like five mil and get another Remmers. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Adam, if I was in Minnesota, I would smack you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ali Natkins in the chat is loving Holton Hill and Mackenzie Alexander as well as Curse says they are killing it. Isn't Holton Hill undrafted free agent? Yes. Uh, yes. Undrafted. He was a priority free agent signing when, after the draft. That is incredible. That kid is, he has far surpassed any expectation I had of where he was picked up and how. So, okay, kudos. Ryan Dennings in the chat says that Barr is playing out of his mind that they better keep him. And I don't know with the salary cap and all the players they have to re resign and contracts they have to extend and everything that's going on. I don't know how many players they can afford to keep. And I'm wondering just how they can make it work with Barr. I'm not seeing it unless uh, Brzezinski can work some magic. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We're, we didn't do anything like the Rams. I feel like we were die at Los Angeles where, you know, the Rams go out and get in Dominic Sue, and you got Aaron Donald already there. They get Marcus Peters, keeps the lead, Brandon Cooks. We're not going to sign all those big names. We did pick up some, you know, good free agents. It's, it's going to be rough considering the quarterback we're tied to, uh, all these extensions we signed, and a name that you got to think about too because he's getting paid way less than he should. We're going to have to restructure Adam Thielen coming up because he's not getting paid for the value that he's at. So Trey Waynes has got to get paid. Yeah. I, I hope that he stays too for, for as many people have been up and down on Trey Waynes. I don't want to see him go anywhere, but Michael Cambry has a great idea that'll solve all our problems. Okay. I'm ready for this. He says we can always get TJ Clemmings back. Yeah. How about this? How about we just have him and Rashad Hill just, switch out there and <laughs> rotate from guard to tackle and we'll just figure it out. Oh that that sounds like a plan. Super it does. Bowl. Money. Super, pure money. Super Bowl. The Trevor Super Simeon Bowl. show. That is exactly how you get that. We re-sign TJ Clinton. <laughs> That's how you get the Trevor Simeon show. <laughs> That's exactly what you need to do. <laughs> oh, oh goodness gracious. <clears throat> I think that's all I have for this week. You guys got anything else? Uh, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Um, you know, we'll, we'll obviously cover this game. Uh, we'll try to get it Monday to you. I do have plans that I have every year on Christmas Eve, so if we do it Monday, it needs to be early. Um, but uh, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Be safe on the road. If you're flying, you're traveling, take care of all your stuff. Plan in advance. Do all that stuff the military taught me. Check your, your vehicle before you get on the road for a long trip. and Just be safe and enjoy the holidays. We don't have a social media question for this week, and our social media for next week next week is no longer relevant at all. 
in terms of the team or anything. So did we already ask that question that was up for the social media? Not not the the Filippo one, the other one. We did. We asked it and addressed it. We did it last week. Okay. We were late. Yeah, I'm sorry. I love you guys. I didn't get to listen last week. That's super bad problem. Oh, you should have heard all the stuff we had to say about you. It was it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's all true. Everything they said was true. We lucky we let your ass back on the show to, to even this week. <laughs> I'm you sorry. Guys. All the love we were getting for just going off script and, and just doing our own. Thing. <laughs> That's the other dynamic because you and Dorian doing the show together is completely different than when me and Kyle just kind of had to figure it out. Oh, it, it had a really, really strange but fun feel. I, I think that the different dynamic between each of us is a lot of fun. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, happy holidays to everyone. Drive safe. Be be careful wherever you go. Uh, enjoy football, enjoy yourselves, but be responsible. Uh, I know that uh, New Year's isn't quite coming up quite yet, but you know, between that and the holidays coming up for everybody, it can be a stressful and sometimes depressing time. So uh, if, if you're not out there and having a blast and having a good time, remember that there are places you can go to get help and there are places that you can go uh, where you can get a nice warm meal if you're struggling in that respect. So uh, please, please don't be afraid to reach out to to anyone if you need a little bit of help because there's no shame in that. Otherwise, I, I hope that you guys have a great time with your families. And yes, Scott Schwab, sometimes we use a little bit of a script. Sometimes. But mostly that's just on the quick hits so that we have a good idea of what we're going through. Our memories aren't as good as they should be. And uh, I know we missed a lot last week when we were going through quick hits, but we were just going off the top of our heads, so... It was, it was that was more of a fun show than a uh, informative show. It, thank you. I got I've got one for you guys and for everybody listening that's still here. Uh, totally not football related, but if you guys haven't heard the Adam Sandler tribute to Chris Farley that he just put out about a day ago, go find that video. He made he wrote a song uh, in true Adam Sandler fashion. It's very funny, but it it encompasses happy, sad, and memorable all in one, and it was pretty good. I, I will say, got it. watch the entire special on Netflix. It's it is, very good. It's wor- the entire special is worth watching. That tribute itself is really amazing. But uh, when I thought Adam Sandler, I thought, oh, this is going to be, this is not going to be good. This is going to be like oh. Jim Carrey thinking he's funny when he's older. <laughs> this is going to be that kind of brutal funny. Jim Carrey is funny. What are he, you talking Jim about? Jim Carrey was funny. No, he is funny. Still. Was funny. Is I'm no. going. With, sorry, I love you, Dorian, but I'm going with Adam. He's, <laughs> he's, kind of, he's kind of out there now, which is fine because some of the stuff that he said is is smart and it's actually intellectual. But yeah, the funniness definitely sank away when he he started going a little bit cuckoo. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> dis- hey, and that's what makes Dorian, it fun. Dorian, I, just because I said that doesn't make Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Liar, liar, and Ace Ventura not funny. They're all great. That's all right. I'm I'm that guy who has no interest in that Watson and Holmes movie with, you know, Farrell and Riley. I don't I don't, I don't blame you, Adam. I, it, it's one of those movies where I'll, I'll see it eventually, but I'm not I'm not yeah I'm not in in high anticipation. I'm, I'm not, not even sure I'll watch it eventually. eventually. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be there <laughs> Christmas. Christmas but I know those are two of your favorites, Mr. Smith. That's why I bring it up is because uh, you are like a massive Step Brothers fan, right? No. No? Who am I thinking of? You're probably thinking of Wes. I, I, I'm i okay with Will Ferrell. I'm okay with John C. Riley. I don't buy into the Step Brothers hype. It's it's funny, yes, but it's more stupid than funny. What? Um, yeah. I, it's, it's a fucking If I'm going to see a Will Ferrell movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm look. I didn't like. I said. I'm not saying it's terrible. I just. It's. I'm not on the train like everybody else is with it. At least it's not a movie about cities driving around and like cars fighting each other. Like I guess that's that's something to be said. I'll give you the bold statement because I haven't done one in a while. <laughs> I'd rather see Wedding Sarah Marshall or Wedding Crashers over Step Brothers any day of the week, all the time. Okay, those are both funnier than for right Sarah Marshall. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just me. No, you're, you're okay. Yeah, that's they're, they're funny. They're funnier. But Scott they're Schwab good. says he wants a purple Dumb and Dumber zoot suit with Vikings horns on it. Uh, if you come to Minnesota and catch a game, uh, keep an eye out for the purple pimps. You can't miss them. Oops. Those guys are awesome. 
Uh, th- yeah, that's that's all I got for this week. Uh, check out the Viking Age. I just released a kind of controversial list of the top 25 wide receivers in franchise history, and I know I'm going to get a lot of crap about it because of the order that I've got them in. But and then some of the players in the top 25 are are ones that might get a little bit debatable as well. But I'm going to talk crap on the Viking Age right now. But I think it's a lot of fun. Um, this tomorrow morning, I'll have up my three reasons why the Minnesota Vikings will defeat the Detroit Lions on Sunday. And uh, yeah, thanks for supporting my work over there and checking it out. Same with Undead Walking; it's a lot of fun right now because we're talking about speculation heading into season nine B, which is the last eight episodes of season nine. Uh, I'm all hyped up about the comics because uh, last month's issue just absolutely blew my mind in ways that i didn't think it should so so yeah um <coughs> be sure to check out the viking engine on dead walking uh we've got some questions in the chat here michael cambria wants to know what jersey you have on dorian uh the chad chad greenway nice choice nice Hi. choice and uh yeah that's all we've got for this week so i'd like to thank everyone for tuning in listening wherever you listen sharing, liking, subscribing, giving thumbs up, uh, waving at us when you see us in the grocery store, where, whatever you're up to. Uh, we're, we're all doing our thing, just to being football fans, hanging out, having a good time, and I'm always impressed when so many of you guys will come out, join the live chat, and interact with us on socials. It's so nice. Uh, so oh on God, that note, oh, what do we got? I had, I had the best thing ever. It's not Viking related. So you guys, this is so funny. Uh, Hunt's Ketchup has announced that Patrick Mahomes is their quarterback brand ambassador now for their ketchup. Now, because remember he said he puts ketchup on macaroni and cheese. Oh, he's fucking gross. Excuse my language. <laughs> Who puts ketchup on yeah, macaroni? That. That's amazing. Ew. So now, now Kermit the Football Frog is uh, sponsored by Hunt's for his mac and cheese ketchup. That's breaking news. Yeah, I don't put ketchup on my macaroni and cheese. No, you're not supposed to. What the hell? Then again, I chastise people who dip pizza and ranch, so. Oh, that's good. I had to get that in there. I knew it was going to irritate Dorian, so I had to throw it in there before we get off. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes something different, so why not? Yep, but once again, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. And we'll be back next week to talk about the Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions. But in the meantime, stay classy, Minnesota.